Hey everybody, I'm Jeremy and welcome to my latest video. Today we're going to take a break from the topic of Docker as part of our Debian series. And instead we're going to look at Linux appliances. And this still fits in with our Debian series because many of the appliances that are available are in fact built on top of Debian. The reason I've decided to cover this now is because there are people in the audience that may not be quite ready for Docker, but this will give them a stepping stone to get more familiar with Linux by either running an appliance in a virtual machine or on an old PC you might have laying around. Let's get into it. Okay, so the first repository for appliances that I want to take a look at is Turnkey Linux. You can find this at turnkeylinux.org. I will have a link in the description. There are many appliances that have been built by Turnkey Linux on their stack, which includes a Debian based. Some popular choices are WordPress, a file server, a domain controller. There are many CRM or customer relationship management options and many others to choose from. If we scroll down on their main page, and take a look at WordPress as an example. You'll see that they've got WordPress in their stack on version 18, and it's a 513 megabyte ISO download. This can be used in your virtualization software of choice, VMware, Proxmox, VirtualBox, etc. But please note that these appliances are built for 64-bit x86 Intel or AMD hardware. Turnkey Linux is a nice starting point because if you eventually move to Proxmox for virtualization, you will find that many of these Turnkey Linux templates are available to build LexC containers from and be customized to your needs. We'll swing back to Proxmox towards the end of the video. Next up, we're going to take a look at Bitnami. This is available at bitnami.com. Again, I'll have a link down in the description. Bitnami started as an independent group, but in May 2019, it was acquired by VMware. In many ways, Bitnami is similar to turnkey Linux. Sometimes you'll find that the Bitnami appliances are a little more up to date than turnkey, but that really comes down to their respective release schedules. If we move to the applications menu on the Bitnami page, you will see some overlap between what Bitnami offers and what is available from Turnkey Linux. Again, we'll use WordPress as an example. If we click on WordPress, you can see that there are several options. On the cloud, containers, and my computer. Now, when it comes to containers, We'll revisit this when we resume our Docker portion of this series, but you can get the pre-built Bitnami appliances as containers for Docker or Kubernetes, which is a whole different subject. Or on my computer, these are available as virtual machines. So if you're using VMware or VirtualBox, you can use these directly. They are in OVA format, which is a universal format for distributing virtual machines. If you are using Proxmox, there are a couple of additional steps you'll have to go through to take this OVA format and make it usable in Proxmox. Speaking of Proxmox, let's jump over there for a moment. All right, here we are on one of our Proxmox hosts. To take a look at the templates that we mentioned earlier from Turnkey Linux, we're going to come down here to Local, CT Templates, and we'll click the Templates button up here at the top. In the search box, if you type Turnkey, it will list out all of those Turnkey Linux templates that can be turned into lightweight LexC containers. Here we've got WordPress. We'll go ahead and download that one and we'll give you a quick example of just how easy it is to get something like this up and running. All right, our 
download is finished, we can go ahead and close this window. And you can see here we've got our Debian 12 turnkey WordPress version 18.0-1 available to us. And to create a new container, you can just right click here on the Proxmox node name, create container. We're gonna call this WordPress demo one resource pool. We don't need to do anything password. If you have an SSH public key, you can paste that in here or load it from a file. We'll move on to template, choose your storage and the template. Next, choose how much storage you wanna give it. We're gonna put this on local LVM and we're gonna give it 24 gigs of disk space. CPU, these are pretty lightweight, but let's give it two cores. Give it two gigs of RAM because WordPress can get a little memory hungry sometimes. Network, DHCP. And next, DNS server. In this case, I normally put in the IP address of my router or firewall and say next. Start after created, finish. And it's going to, in just a moment or two, load this and we'll be able to go into our container. Now, the reason for showing this is that the process for doing this on a VM is very similar. And we'll take a look at that in a few minutes. For now, while we're waiting, the main difference between a container and a virtual machine for the purpose of this series is that a container uses the host system's resources in a slightly different way, such that, for instance, in the case of Proxmox, it uses the kernel on Proxmox and some of the other facilities that are built into Proxmox to be able to make this container super lightweight and use fewer overall resources. So we take a look at this. You can see for memory usage, it's using 177 megabytes and it's using about 1.1 gig of storage. Let's look at our console. And as is common with all of the turnkey Linux appliances, whether they're virtual machines or containers, you log in with root and the password you set at install time. And it is completely normal for it not to show anything when you type in a password, specifically in the terminal. Now, get into their configuration and here you will see asterisks and the WordPress password. And we'll just leave that alone for the time being. We'll skip this and notifications will skip and we'll say install. And as you can see, this is really quick to get this up and running. So here's our IP address, 74.155. And you can see we've got our basic WordPress up and running. And you're in the back end of WordPress. And of course, the first thing you want to do here is updates. Let's move over to our Windows PC and I'll show you the same process if we were setting it up in VirtualBox. All right, here we are on our Windows 10 machine and I've got the turnkey Linux website open. We're gonna go ahead and grab the ISO image and that's gonna start downloading. All right, as you can see here, our ISO image is downloaded. So we'll go ahead and close Firefox. We're here on VirtualBox on Windows 10. We're gonna say new. We're gonna call this WordPress demo two. We'll select the ISO image, say other, go to our downloads and select our turnkey WordPress, open. VM type is going to be Linux version, they did not detect that correctly, is going to be Debian. 
Uh, Debian 11 Bullseye is the newest they've got listed, so we'll select that and say Next. Again, we'll give it 2 gigs of RAM, 2 CPUs, Next, 20 gig hard drive, Next, Finish. Now, the settings we want to change on this, I always come in and turn off the floppy drive. And then under Network, we want to change from NAT to Bridged. That way it'll be available across your network. All right, for our purposes today, we're going to choose the Hyper-V Virtual Ethernet Adapter and make sure the adapter type is the Intel Pro 1000. That should get us where we want to be. Say OK, and then we can start our VM. With a little luck, this will work. OK, so here you've got slightly different options than what we saw in the container. We're going to install to hard disk. Now keep in mind that this would be the same procedure if you were putting it on an old PC. You would put the ISO image on a USB stick with a tool such as Ventoy or Rufus, if you will. And then from there, it's selecting the boot media. Make sure you're booting from the turnkey Linux image. And then the process would be virtually identical to what you are seeing here. Uh, we're going to use guided entire disk and finish partitioning and write changes. Yes, we want to save changes to the disk. All right, install the Grub bootloader on the master boot record. Yes. All right, so at this point, we want to say eject and reboot. And that should restart our machine. We'll go ahead and click remove disk from drive. And if we hit enter, should restart. And this will go into our system, much as we saw with the container install. And you'll see the same procedure for entering passwords. And so we'll fast forward through this and show you the finished product in Firefox. Okay, let's load up Firefox. And we do, in fact, get on WordPress. So the slight weirdness with this is because of the Hyper-V adapter. And if you don't have Hyper-V installed, you should you should get a bridged address on your normal subnet. We can log in with admin and our password. And we're in WordPress. Same as on the container version. Took a couple of extra steps, but the end product is the same. All right, after removing Hyper-V from my system and restarting the computer, as you can see now, we no longer have the Hyper-V options in the network listing for network cards. So if we restart our WordPress VM, we should get a network address on our local network and be able to access it from any device on the network. So let's let this boot up and then we'll switch back to the Mac side and we'll open this up to verify. Okay, back on our Mac side. We need to be on 172, 16, 74, 156, I believe, was our address, 156. And we can log into that. And so here we've got our VM running on VirtualBox on the Windows machine. And we've got WordPress also on Proxmox in a container. All right, everybody, I know we've covered a bunch of information today, but this should help give a solid base to build on. And for those people who might not be ready for Docker yet, we've got something that we can still work with. So down in the description, you will find a link to a playlist that has 
other videos I've made that focus on the uh, turnkey Linux appliances and walkthroughs for those. Now, these might be older versions, but the general process of going through them is going to be virtually the same as what you see in those older videos and what you've seen today in the video going through Proxmox and VirtualBox installs. If you have any questions about this stuff, please head down to the comment section. I love to hear from my audience and I will do my very best to answer questions. And if I don't have the answer to a question, I'll at least give you some guidance on how I would go further to research the project. And until next time, thank you all for watching. I appreciate your support. Please hit the like button on your way out and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.